Uh, Professor Mario Brock, who's from the Department of Neurosurgery at the Free University of Berlin. Dr. Brock has been uh, here at the International Interdiscal Society in uh, Cambridge, uh, England. He's about to leave. He's got to catch a cab and an airplane to get home. We thought we would grab him for a few minutes. And just to ask your, your opinions of the future of minimally invasive surgery, number one, and uh, number two, uh, the World Congress that's meeting next year in your hometown of Berlin, what are your expectations for that? Well. I think that the minimally invasive spinal surgery, uh, as well as minimally invasive procedures of other territories of the body, will make a substantial progress within the next five years, mainly due to the fact that we are gaining experience with this technology, but also to the fact that new micromanipulators and micromotors are being developed and invented uh, thanks to new technology in producing these uh, pieces of equipment. Obviously, uh, if the patient is asked, he will always choose a minimally invasive procedure, yes. obviously, for good reasons. And in the flow of this progress, this is why a group of people has decided to organize next year in Berlin from August 27 to September 1st, the first World Congress on Spinal Surgery and related disciplines. In other words, not only neurosurgeons, orthopedic surgeons, spinal surgeons, but also physiotherapists, radiologists, everybody having anything to do with the column must sit around a table. We have contacted car manufacturers who have interest in whiplash prevention, injuries of the uh, cervical cord. We have contacted furniture manufacturers who claim that they produce uh, pieces of furniture which are friendly to the spine. And we will have a serious, a, a large forum and at uh, lunchtime, we will have uh, lunch seminars, but they will not be called lunch seminars. They are called high noon controversies. Uh, just like that movie of Gary Cooper, High yes, Noon. <laughs> and each of these high noon controversies will have two speakers, one pro and one contra, a given very, very debated topic of spinal therapy. That's wonderful. We very much enjoyed your paper, speaking of new therapies on, on uh, monitoring patients under percutaneous uh, procedures that are awake and alert. Could you comment just briefly on um, what you think the future of that is? It looks very promising. Uh, obviously, it is very important to know anatomy. And it is very important to respect and preserve anatomical structures. But whatever we do, is to restore the functional capacity of the patient, be it by making him able to work again. And our main concern is, of course, not damaging function of the patient. So in this context, we can watch the structures, but it is much more efficient if we, during a given surgical procedure, monitor continuously the function of the structure. For example, a nerve. It is important to see that that nerve is not injured, but it is at least as important to see that although not, let's say, cutting or tearing the nerve, we are not uh, damaging its function by manipulating it, a, a fact that not necessarily is seen but is felt by the nerve. So I think that monitoring of function is really here to stay and will be introduced more and more into our therapeutic uh, activities.